Early in life, I was exposed to STEM principles by my father, who eagerly taught me advanced mathematics procedures like Pythagorean theorem and algebraic concepts during my early elementary school years. Because his enthusiasm for math was so wonderfully contagious, I didn't even realize that the math skills that he was teaching me were far beyond my years until much later when I was exposed to them again in middle school classes. During the summers of high school, I participated in a pre-college engineering program. The opportunity was a partnership between my school district, a local HBCU, and a national product manufacturing company. I learned about the many ways that the STEM subjects we learned in school were related to engineering design principles that the company used to create and produce specialized materials that were used in everything from construction projects to protective gear used by the U.S. military and police departments. All of these experiences influenced my decision to major in engineering in college and earn an undergraduate degree in systems engineering. Simply put, Systems are everywhere. Systems engineering is an academic and professional discipline that impacts many fields in the world in which we live. The logistical and physical systems that are a part of the multiple facets of life include transportation systems in our many modes of travel and infrastructure, human resources and people management in every organization from schools to military to corporations, information technology systems, and even energy resources systems, such as power plants and access to energy infrastructure. My first job in engineering as a systems engineer was at a nuclear generating station in Virginia. The power plant provides power for approximately 450,000 homes, which is 17% of the state's electricity. The power station uses water from a nearby lake to turn the steam produced from energy production to water in a process called condensation. The water is then deposited back into the lake at a temperature that is slightly higher than the average lake temperature. This process is called waste heat treatment and it is closely monitored by the power station engineers to ensure that it does not harm local residents or area wildlife in any way. At full operating capacity, nearly 2 million gallons of water are processed through the power station each minute. Bodies of water called lagoons are used as cooling areas for the waste water before it is finally returned to the main lake. Energy waste production and management remains a constant concern of engineers in the field. The energy company maintains a close relationship with the state's Department of Health to provide useful information regarding use of the lake for recreational activities. Recently, the use, saving, and restoration of energy has been a major concern because of the hurricanes and tropical storms that have impacted the United States and our neighboring nations. Over the last few months, access to power resources has been greatly compromised because severe weather conditions have knocked out power to large numbers of residents in cities in Texas, California, Florida, and other states. Also, whole countries and territories have been affected by the storms, including Puerto Rico, Haiti, St. Martin, St. Bart's, St. Kitts and Nevis, Anguilla, the Virgin Islands, the Dominican Republic, Turks and Caicos, St. Thomas, St. John, Dominica, Montserrat, and Guadalupe. The widespread devastation that these areas have experienced are an important reminder to companies that provide energy resources to the homes, schools, and businesses that are located in these areas. In each of these cases, access to recovery infrastructure can vary greatly and is often based on the socioeconomic stability of the residents and the locales that are affected, as well as the resources and privileges that have formerly been afforded to them. In times of natural disaster, it is important to employ systematic approaches to ensuring access to everyone's health, well-being, and in many cases, survival. Likewise, Resource restoration requires local, state, and national governments to quickly assess damage and the future needs of residents in ways that are equitable. Also, 
While systems engineering is often used to develop contingency plans for natural devastation, there are usually unpredictable circumstances that residents face. In these unavoidable circumstances, systems are used to deploy aid by way of military intervention and medical assistance to support the logistics required to help manage and sustain recovery efforts. Systems engineers also employ their knowledge of current systems to develop new plans and products. For example, they can work with solar and wind energy engineers to develop strategic plans for use and placement of solar and wind power infrastructure to provide alternative energy use in times of natural disaster. Likewise, systems engineers can partner with physicists to develop innovative ways to produce and store kinetic energy. Over the course of my academic and professional experiences, I have learned how important the work of STEM professionals and educators are. Likewise, I have developed a great appreciation for the STEM education I have received early in life, at home, at school, and in my community. These experiences have all motivated me to pursue a graduate degree that will help me identify the most effective ways to contribute to the field of education and my local communities in manners that empower and embolden more students to pursue education and careers in STEM. For these reasons, I am a very proud member of eCommunities.